list is Moises Arias, but Hannah Montana fans would know him better as Rico Suave. The annoying kid who ran the surf shop called Rico's, well, his parents owned it, but he ran the biz and made sure that everyone knew about it. Moises was just 12 years old when he started working on the show. He was an adorably short little guy with the little Justin Bieber flipping hair. And if we're going off of appearance, he definitely has the most shocking transformation out of everyone on this list. He is now 25 years old and is rocking some dreadlocks and facial hair and kind of looks like Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. The only thing that remains the same is his height. He's still very short. Oh, and he also posts a bunch of topless pictures on his Instagram showing off his six pack. Which makes me kind of uncomfortable because if I'm being honest, he's still 13 years old to me. So it's kind of a little bit creepy. But outside of appearance, he has a very successful career. He started his own photography company called 490TX and takes pictures for magazines, like big ones. He did a shoot of Kanye and Kim West and his pictures were actually used, which would be a huge deal for any photographer. On top of that, he is still doing some acting. He starred in movies like Pitch Perfect 3, The Wall of Mexico, and Five Feet Apart. And let's remember, he's only 25 years old, so his career is just getting started. Next up at number 9 is Jason Earls. You guys remember the 30 year old man who played Miley Cyrus' 16 year old brother, right? If you didn't know that, I'm not kidding. He was actually 29 years old when he was cast to play the 16 year old character, Jackson Stewart. But you wouldn't have known because he genuinely looks 16 years old. You're probably trying to do the math in your head wondering how old that makes him now. Let me save you the time, he is now 42 years old. But he still looks the exact same. He was married to his ex-wife Jennifer Earls for 11 years and they had one daughter together named Noah Earls. They got a divorce back in 2013 and he got remarried in 2018 to a woman named Katie Dry. As for his acting career, it did continue on after Hannah Montana. The series ended in 2011 and Jason continued to book whatever roles that he could. You can watch him in a few different TV series like Kickin' It, Welcome to Howler, and Hotel de Lune. He still posts about Hannah Montana on his social media pages, which is really fun, and he keeps in touch with the rest of the cast. Sliding to the number 8 spot is Billy Ray Cyrus. Most people knew who Billy Cyrus was long before he starred on the Disney series. His mullet was famously known, as well as a single, Achy Breaky Heart. He basically played himself on the show. His character's name was Billy Ray and he played Miley's dad on the show. Imagine going to work every day with your dad. I have mixed emotions about that. He was one of the oldest cast members at the time, obviously, and overall he doesn't look much different. Just a little more gray and a lot more tattooed, which is kinda hot. So what has he been up to all these years? He went back to his music roots and released a few albums. But more recently he started touring with Lil Nas X after their song Old Town Road went viral and took the number one place on the charts. Not gonna lie, was super random seeing this collaboration. Not sure how it even happened or how the idea came up. But people are really into it. And Billy Ray is hot. Let's be honest, I would totally go see him in concert. And at number seven is Cody Lindley. You would know him better as Jake Ryan, Miley's on and off boyfriend. Low key, but not really low key. Every girl watching the show had a huge crush on him and we all freaked the F out when we saw them kiss for the first time. Cody was just 16 years old when he took on the role and stole the hearts of every teen girl watching. His character Jake led us on an emotional roller coaster. One minute we hated his arrogant personality and the next minute we were crying over his romantic gestures. The actor has always had positive things to say about his time on the show and working alongside Miley. Over the past 15 years he has booked some roles but nothing that put him on the map the same way Hannah Montana did. The last role he booked was playing Matt Shepard in Sharknado 4 and 5 and we haven't seen him in anything in almost 3 years. But he he is still pursuing an acting career and is now an acting coach where he helps others learn and practice the craft. He's now 30 years old and as far as I know, he's a single man, he's vegan, and he lives with his three dogs. Cody, call me sometime. I love dogs. Cruising into number 6 spot is Frances Callier who took on the role of Hannah Montana's bodyguard, Roxy. We can never forget her famous line, Roxy like a puma. She was on the series from 2006 to 2008 and played Hannah Montana's very protective bodyguard. She was very short and probably not the first person you would pick to be a bodyguard, but she was fiercely loyal and had a big heart. The reason she was hired in the first place was because she happened to be working at the wig shop when Miley and her dad went to pick out a wig for her Hannah persona. Ultimately, Roxy is the one who chooses the signature blonde wig. After the series ended, Frances continued to act and has booked a role in Two Broke Girls, He's Just Not That Into You, The Cleveland Show, and even did voiceover 
voiceover work in Family Guy. She is now half of the comedy duo called Frangela, the other half is Angela V. Shelton. The duo does weekly podcasts and they appear as regulars on VH1's Best Week Ever. She is married to Thomas Green and although they don't have any kids together, Frances has helped out on MTV's show called Made and helps children with their diets. Halfway through the list, number five is Anna Maria Perez de Tegel. Whoa, that is quite a name. She played Ashley on the Disney series. You would remember her as the popular school diva that always clashed with Miley and Lily. And if you were like me, you hated her. They were basically each other's school enemies. Her face was all over Disney after she landed this role. You might also recognize her from the Camp Rock movies and from the 2009 movie Fame. But since Hannah Montana ended in 2011, she's only been able to book minor roles when it comes to film work. She did appear on Broadway in Godspell in 2011, and in more recent years, the now 28 year old created a YouTube channel called Anna's Beauty Secrets where she vlogs her favorite beauty tricks. In her personal life, she got engaged in November 2018 to her longtime boyfriend Scott Klein Jr. and they got married earlier this year in June 2019. It seems like her focus is more on starting a family and settling down and less on building an acting resume. Which is totally fine. She was working in film all throughout her childhood and teens, so she's probably looking forward to this chapter of her life. Going hand in hand at number four is Shanika Knowles. You can't have Amber without Ashley. Shanika took on the role of the other school enemy. Amber and Ashley constantly teamed up against Miley and Lily. Now, first things first, let's just clear the air. The most common question she gets asked is if she's related to Beyonce, and she's made it clear that the answer is no. So if you're wondering, there's no relation. She was another actress who spent her early teens on the Disney Channel. During her time on Hannah Montana, she was also in Super Sweet 16, Jump In, and Unfabulous. After landing her role of Amber in 2011, she went on to book roles in other TV series like Awkward, Melissa and Joey, and The Young and the Restless. Her most recent role was playing Talia in the new Life Size 2 movie, which for me personally would be a dream come true. The actress is now 28 years old and is hoping to help other artists with their dreams. She created an acting course called Inside Talents, which offers tools and support to artists who want to learn more about the craft. But don't forget that during her time on Hannah Montana, her character was also a singer and she had a killer voice. She is still singing. You can check out her latest single and music video called Selenite. All right, guys, here we are, number three, with Mitchell Musso. He took on the role of Oliver Oaken throughout the entire series, Miley and Lily's guy best friend. The three of them made a hilarious trio, and most people would agree that he was a fan favorite. After his time ended on the show, he got a lead role in another Disney series called Pair of Kings, where he played King Brady. On top of that, he was also doing voiceover work for Jeremy Johnson on the animation series Phineas and Fur. His career was skyrocketing, but then when he was just 20 years old, he got arrested for a DUI. Because of the charge, he lost his role on the show and his character was written out of it. He disappeared from the spotlight for a few years, but in more recent years, he came back. He booked a role on the TV series called Milo Murphy's Law, and he did reunite with the rest of the Hannah Montana cast last year in 2018. He still looks the same as he did before, just with shorter hair. He's been pretty quiet this year and he's remained off social media ever since then, so it's kind of hard to say what he's truly up to these days. He's now 28 years old like most of his other co-stars and I am not sure if he's single or not. Sorry guys, he's cute though. He cute. In spot number two is Emily Osment, who did a flawless job when it came to playing the role of Lily Trescott. Let's be honest, Miley's tomboy best friend Lily was an icon. She had a skater style, almost like some kind of Avril Lavigne vibe, and she was just simply hilarious. The actress has gone on to have the most successful career when it comes to acting, mainly because she has stayed consistent and only focused on that part of the entertainment industry. After the series ended, she continued to book acting roles, all while going to college. Yes, the Disney star attended college like any other student. She went to Occidental College in Los Angeles where she studied theater for two years. And it seems like her focus and hard work paid off because she landed lead roles on a handful of TV series. She played Roxy on Cleaners, Gabby Diamond on the show Young and Reckless, Teresa in The Kaminsky Method, and Roxy Doyle in Almost Family, which came out this year. She is killing it. The 27 year old is just getting started by the looks of it. Speaking of looks, she also has not aged a day. She looks the exact same and I am a little bit jealous. Taking over the number one spot on our list is of course Miley Cyrus. I know that I don't really have to update you guys on where she's at because she's one of the biggest pop stars in Hollywood and even if you don't follow her, her life is all over the media anyways. It is no secret that the reason Miley is famous is because of her role as Hannah Montana. It's what set her entire career in motion. She was only 11 years old when she booked the role and her entire childhood was on the Disney Channel under a very heavy spotlight. Since leaving the show, she did continue to act for some time. She appeared in a couple of movies, LOL, So 
Go Undercover, and The Last Song. Her main focus has been on music throughout the years though and I don't think I really need to talk about it because it is all over the radio and music charts. She's basically everywhere. But fans were thrilled to see her make a return to acting a few months ago on the TV series Black Mirror. As for her love life, let's be honest, it's a sh** show. She was married to Liam Hemsworth for 8 months, then they got separated, then she was making out with a girl in Greece or something, and now she's publicly dating Cody Simpson, who is also from the Disney Channel. And all this happened in a matter of like 2 months. So yeah, she's been a busy girl. Coming in at number 10, Tiffany Amber Thiessen. Ah, Tiffany Thiessen, my number one crush growing up in the 90s and 2000s. Thiessen starred in Say by the Bell as Kelly Kapowski for over 75 episodes. She then went on to appear in the college years as well as Say by the Bell Wedding in Las Vegas. However, my favourite role has to be Tiffany Thiessen in Beverly Hills 90210, where she played Valerie Malone. Oh boy. Hottie. My ultimate crush. She has had a relatively successful career appearing in Two Guys, a Girl, and a Pizza Place, Fast Lane, Good Morning Miami, and as of right now, Alex and Katie, a Netflix original comedy. Personally, I'm patiently waiting for a new 90210, which is just about Valerie Malone and how she was clearly the best character in the entire series. Okay, bye. Coming in at 9, Joey Lawrence. Joey Lawrence was a Hollywood heartthrob back in the 90s. Sorry and Blossom on the greatest shows of all time, Brotherly Love and Run of the House from 2003 to 2004. He has always been around, but fans have slowly started to fall off his wagon over time, simply because he shed his gorgeous locks. Nothing wrong with that, there could be many reasons. It's hard when an actor is known for their hair, and that identifiable trait is now gone. In recent years, he starred alongside Melissa Joan Hart on ABC's Melissa and Joey, and is also part of the controversial Roe vs. Wade cast. He also placed third on Dancing with the Stars, and debuted on Broadway as Billy Flynn in Chicago. Good for you. Coming in at 8. Kel Mitchell. Most will remember Kel from the show Keenan and Kel, which ran from 1992 to 2000, making it one of Kel's first acting projects aside from the TV show All That. Following the success of Keenan and Kel, he continued acting but transitioned more into voice acting, starring in Clifford the Big Red Dog and Pink Panther and Pals. During this time, reports began to surface that he had died, however, Mitchell is alive and well. The comedic actor has landed reoccurring roles on several small series, including Game Shakers. He also brought back the popular character Ed to interview players and report for Nickelodeon Sports at the 2017 Super Bowl Media Day. Who loves orange soda? Coming in at number 7, Nate Rickett. At one point in time, Nate Rickett was a Hollywood heartthrob, thanks to his role of Harvey Kinkle in the widely popular Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Aside from Sabrina, he appeared in very few projects and instead left the field of acting to pursue music instead. Probably for the best, he wasn't the greatest actor. The former actor plays the drums, guitar, banjo, harmonica, and is in a band called Sea Duck and Nate. If you want to check out some of his music, he released an album back in 2004 titled Tone Control. And as of 2012, he often plays at the piano bar on Selma in Hollywood in Los Angeles. However, if you saw Nate Rickett today, you likely wouldn't even recognize him, with the former star looking a whole lot different to when he played Harvey. He has much less hair and a very cool mustache. Coming in at 6, Omri Katz. Katz was a highly sought after actor back in the 90s, appearing in works such as Dallas, Erie, Indiana, Hocus Pocus, and The John Larroquette Show. However, as soon as the millennium rolled in, he disappeared completely, leaving some fans shocked at his quick and mysterious departure. Well, I found out what went down. Turns out he's taken to a new occupation, specifically professional hairstyling. Good to know. If you want to find him, head to LA for a new haircut and perhaps you'll luck out and get Max from Hocus Pocus cutting your locks. Blessed. In at 5, Mark Paul Gosseler. I think that's how you say his last name. I remember growing up back in the 90s, being a massive fan of Saved by the Bell, only for my sister to tell me Zach Morris was dead in real life and had died in a jeep accident. I believed this for most of my life, honestly, until a few years ago when I finally saw him once again in NYPD Blue. Anyway, back in the 90s, Mark appeared in Saved by the Bell from 1989 to 92. Saved by the Bell, The College Years, as well as St. Tammany Miracle. However, his role as Zach Morris was arguably his most successful. Mark reappeared though a few years back, starring in NYPD Blue before going on to start in Raising the Bar, Franklin and Bash, and The Passage. He is very much alive, and I will never forgive my sister for what she did to me. In at 4, Mara Wilson. Mara Wilson seemed to be all over our screens throughout almost all of the 90s, starring in movies like Mrs. Doubtfire, Matilda, and my personal favourite, A Simple Wish. However, as soon as the millennium hit, she seemed to disappear completely as well, citing a lack of creative freedom. Since that time, she has become 
become a writer having written an off Broadway play as well as a book about her life. She has also dabbled in some voice acting which fans of Welcome to Night Vale will be familiar with as she voices one of the characters in the quirky Twilight Zone podcast. She has since appeared sparingly in a handful of projects including Big Hero 6 the series, Bojack Horseman and an episode of Broad City, however I highly doubt she will ever make a full return to acting. If you want to see what she's up to just head over to Twitter, she is very funny. Coming in at 3 Melissa Joan Hart Yet another Sabrina star on our list, we have Sabrina the Teenage Witch herself. Melissa Joan Hart was who all young girls desired to be back in the 90s, starring in works such as Clarissa Explains It All, Sabrina and Drive Me Crazy. In between, she starred in a handful of one-off episodes for hugely popular shows including Boy Meets World where she played her character of Sabrina. The actress has continued to work and has had a thriving career appearing in Melissa and Joey, No Good Nick and even in the upcoming untitled Clarissa Explains It All reboot. Outside of acting, Melissa also directed the TV movie The Watcher in the Woods for Lifetime back in 2017 and as of right now is the mother of three and a spokesperson for Nutrisystem. In at number 2, Amanda Bynes. Amanda Bynes was perhaps one of my favourite actresses when I was growing up, with the star appearing in some of my most beloved childhood shows, including The Amanda Show and all that. Outside of TV, she also went on to star in movies such as Big Fat Liar, What A Girl Wants, She's The Man, Hairspray and Easy A, which was the star's final movie. Amanda was propelled into superstardom at such a young age that it took a toll on her mental health, resulting in the star having a very public breakdown and seeking treatment for her health issues. She resurfaced in 2018, looking healthier and happier, stating that she is ready to relaunch her career. I for one cannot wait. And Finally coming in at number 1, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. JTT was the heartthrob we all knew and loved back in the 90s, starring in The Lion King, Pinocchio and of course everyone's favourite sitcom, Home Improvement. However, after immense success and fame, it was a surprise to all fans when JTT quit acting following the 90s and instead threw himself into academics. Nerd. Even getting into Harvard and then studying abroad in Scotland. In turn, keeping his head in the books for almost 10 years. He has been on our screens here and there, appearing on a handful of episodes of 8 Simple Rules in 2004 and Last Man Standing from 2013 to 2015. However, that was the last time we saw JTT on our screens, with the former actor now focusing on writing and directing instead. He is now 38 years old and I'm desperately hoping he makes a return to our screen soon. Not because he's any good, just because he's hot. Starting off our countdown at number 10 is Rondell Sheridan, the papa bear on the show. You would know him as Victor Baxter, the hilarious man of the house in the Baxter family. He was incredibly goofy and lovable, it was hard not to wish that he was our own dad sometimes. The series ran from 2003 to 2007 and then he reprised his role for the spin off show Cory in the House, which ran from 2007 to 2008. The majority of his acting career was playing this role. He booked a few jobs after that, but nothing really big and then in 2018 he reprised his role for the reboot show Raven home. His acting resume is just a lot of Victor Baxter. If it weren't for that role, it's kind of hard to say where his career would be right now, but he did put his talent and humor to good use. He became a comedian. He does stand up comedy shows across the US and he's landed some gigs on comedy TV and just for laughs. As for his personal life, he is now 61 years old and is currently single as far as we know. And although he was a big family man on the Disney series, he doesn't have any kids of his own. Next up at number 9 is Takia Kima. She played the mama bear on the TV show and took on the role of Tanya Baxter, wife and mom of the Baxter family. She was definitely the one to keep the family in line and fans were upset when she suddenly disappeared from the show. She played Tanya from 2003 to 2006 but during the fourth and final season she was nowhere to be found. Rumors started claiming that she grew sick of her role but later on it was revealed that there were two major reasons she left and it had nothing to do with her being bored of the show. One was because her contract was actually only for three seasons and the second was because when the fourth season came out, her grandmother was suffering from Alzheimer's disease and she became her caregiver. Her acting career did continue after that. She appeared in Sharknado 4, There's Johnny, and What Happened Last Night. Sadly, we did not see her in the Raven's Home reboot. She is now a writer and has published two books of her own, and she's also doing all sides to film. She's acting, producing, and directing. Outside of the Baxter family and in her own personal life, she too is single and has no kids of her own. You thinking what I'm thinking? Rondell and Takia should get married. We saw how adorable they were on the show. I say they give it a try in real life. 
Swipe at the number eight spot is Rose Abdu, also known as the Spanish teacher Senorita Rodriguez. She took on the role from 2003 to 2006, but her career did not stop there. She's also well known for her role as Gypsy on the TV series Gilmore Girls. But she stuck with Disney throughout the years and also showed up in Wizards of Waverly Place, Good Luck Charlie, and Hotel Transylvania. Her acting resume is stacked with great roles, starring on Parenthood, Shameless, Scandal, and she is currently playing Linda on Bless This Mess. As for her personal life, she is married to a man named John Matta, but they don't have any kids of their own. She's now 56 years old, and by the looks of her IMDb page, which is full, she's really focused on her acting career and it shows. In the number seven spot is David Henry. He took on a number of roles when he was a kid actor, but one of his memorable ones was Larry, Corey Baxter's best friend. He starred on That's So Raven from 2004 to 2007, and then later went on to play Justin Russo in Wizards of Waverly Place. Most people know him from that show, so they often forget that he was in That's So Raven. But his career did move forward outside of Disney, and he starred in How I Met Your Mother from 2005 all the way until 2014, and also in movies like Grown Ups 2 and Paul Blart Mall Cop. In recent years, his acting career has slowed down, and that might be because he found himself in some trouble with the law, and also he started a family. In September 2018, he was arrested and charged at the LAX airport for carrying a loaded gun, which apparently wasn't intentional. He apologized for the incident on Twitter, but was still charged on three counts. Good news is, he got married to Maria Cahill in April 2017, and they have a beautiful daughter named Pia Francesca. It seems like he's busy with his new family, which could be why he hasn't appeared in the reboot. At number six, we have Jonathan McDaniel, also known as Raven's high school boyfriend that we all had a major crush on. Don't even try to deny it, ladies. He was in the series from 2003 to 2006, and fans were thrilled to see him make his return as Devin Carter in the new reboot series Raven's Home. He didn't play her boyfriend this time, but he actually played her ex-husband and baby daddy to their two twins, which is kind of heartbreaking that they didn't work out. The series began in 2017 and is scheduled to run until 2020, and as of now, it is looking like he will be continuing with the show until then. But outside of that so Raven, he still made an acting career for himself, starring in TV series like Nine, Aim High, and Hit the Floor. But you might also know him as Lil J. That's right, he is also known as being an American rapper. First came into the music scene back in 2002 with his debut single called It's the Weekend. His music slowed down after 2013 when he booked the role of German Vega on Hit the Floor. It seems like he's focusing on acting now, but I know what you're all wondering. You girls are probably like, just tell us the good stuff, is he single? According to online records, the 34 year old is currently single, and he is busy being a dad to a beautiful little girl named Aza J and a son named Asher Levi. Levi? Yo, it's your kid's name. I don't know how you say it. I'm not totally sure what happened to baby mama. Some articles claim that he was married to a woman named Jacqueline for a year, but honestly, his love life is a mystery, and Wikipedia says he ain't ever be married. And I trust Wikipedia. Do you? Halfway through the list, number five is Adrian Balin. You might know her from the Cheetah Girls, but before she was one of Raven's Cheetah sisters, she was playing her enemy on That So Raven. She took on the role of Elena Rivera, and some people probably love to hate her. Raven and Elena were best friends until fourth grade when Raven won the lead role in the school play. From there on out, they fought about everything, but mostly for the attention of her man. Boy drama. Typical. She was only on the show from 2003 to 2004, and when it ended, she went on tour with the Cheetah Girls, and that's pretty much what she's known for. Well, that, and for being Rob Kardashian's ex girlfriend. But now she is working on her own digital show called Wear It Well. She created the show in hopes to help women get comfortable in their own skin. It's a daytime show that follows her and her girlfriends as they try to find the perfect fit in clothes. As for her personal life, she got married to a gospel singer named Israel Hutton in 2016. He has four kids of his own from his previous marriage, so technically Adrian does have kids. As for her own, she opened up in 2018 about her struggles to get pregnant. So here's hoping things get better for her and she can become a mama herself. Here we are number four with Kyle Massey. He's best known for playing Corey Baxter, Raven's little brother. Fans adored his hilarious character so much that he even got his own spin-off series called Corey in the House, which ran from 2007 to 2008. His acting career started to slow down after that, but we did hear his voice in the series called Fish Hooks from 2010 
in 2014. More recently, he started making headlines, but not for good reasons. He got into some serious legal issues after being sued for allegedly sending sexual explicit material to a 13 year old girl. He is 28 years old now, and apparently he sent explicit texts, videos, and photos to a teen in December 2018. He was sued in March 2019 and was sued for $1.5 million, according to the lawsuit. Things aren't going too well compared to his time on Disney. His latest acting gig was playing a customer in a movie called I Got the Hookup Too. In our third spot is Orlando Brown, also known for playing Eddie Thomas, Raven's best friend and almost boyfriend. He appeared on the show from start to finish and he was definitely a fan favorite character, which is why it was such a shame to see his career start to crumble. After the series ended, he went on to book a few acting roles whenever he could, but nothing that put him on the map. He even dabbled in the music industry for a little bit, but did not quite succeed. Throughout the more recent years, Orlando has been in trouble with the law and has been arrested for multiple things. In 2016, he was arrested and charged with possession, misdemeanor domestic battery, and obstruction of justice. His behavior started getting weird. He got a horrific tattoo of Raven's face on his neck, which Raven herself has said makes her uncomfortable. And he smiled in his mugshot, so it kind of looks like he's making the best out of a bad situation. But in December 2018, he appeared on a special interview with Dr. Phil where he opened up about his drug addiction while also denying it. He also wore these really strange green alien eye contact lenses, and he refused to get treatment from Dr. Phil. He was making claims that he already went through rehab and does not want to go back. In the strange appearance, which you can watch on YouTube, he said he was four years sober, that Michael Jackson was his father, and that he has four kids that he's never met. It was the last time we saw him, and genuinely, I'm just wishing him the best, and I hope that he gets some help. Like, I'm actually being genuine about that. Moving on to number two is Annalise Vanderpool. Her her breakout role was Chelsea on the series Raven's Other Best Friend. Her hilarious personality was impossible not to fall in love with and fans were thrilled to hear that she would be reuniting with Raven in the new series Raven's Home. It's crazy to see them all grown up but still having that same friendship that we adored. After the series ended back in 2007, she appeared in some other smaller roles but she mainly got involved with theater. She made her Broadway debut as Belle in Beauty and the Beast so her talent is still being put to good use. But she has also made some rough headlines throughout her career. She was arrested for a DUI in LA back in 2006 after she swerved into a parked car, which then slid and hit two other cars. Her blood alcohol levels were more than twice over the legal limit, and she was ordered to go on probation for 36 months as well as pay her fines and assessments. She too spent some time in treatment. But luckily, she's been able to turn her life around and continue to pursue a career. 35 year old is a single lady with no kids, so anyone who had a crush on her back in the day, now is your chance. She looks good. In our number one spot is the one and only Raven Simone. She took on the title role in the series, and let's be honest, she made the show what it is. I am convinced that no one could play the part better than she did. The show has become a staple for Disney, and many kids spent years idolizing her, not only for the TV series, but also for being a member of the Cheetah Girls. But after that, so Raven ended, she did not go on tour with them, and instead just continued to pursue an acting career. We didn't see much of her compared to what we were used to. She got a role in the TV series called State of Georgia back in 2011, and then it kind of got quiet. It was a thrill to see her make her way back into the spotlight after appearing in the TV series Blackish, and then later announced the Raven's Home reboot. But behind the scenes, a lot has gone on in Raven's personal life. She came out as gay back in 2014 and continued to fight for the rights of the LGBTQ community. But later, she told Oprah that she did not want to be labeled and just wants to be seen as, I quote, a human who loves humans. We are thrilled to have her back on our screens, and this time, she is better than ever. From 2013 to 2018, Raven enrolled in the Academy of Art University where she graduated with a degree in fine arts. So even though we didn't see her for a little while, she was still passionate about her future in acting. But we are happy to have her back.